fast? Is this making sense? We good? All righty. Let's say we've got an hour on a webinar. That's a clock face. And we start here at the 12 o'clock mark. By the time you've done your intro piece, it's 10 minutes in. We want to make our offer at about the 45 minute mark. That gives us 35 minutes to teach. In 35 minutes, you can only teach three pieces of content. What do we do in each of the three pieces of content? Well, we've got to be really careful about what we choose to teach and what we choose not to teach. I'm going to give you four rules for each of your pieces of content. You ready? Every bit of content you teach must, number one, further the sale. If it doesn't help you sell stuff, it doesn't belong in your, in your webinar to sell. If it's a teaching webinar, different story. Number two, it's got to give you the chance to show proof. So uh, after you've taught your thing, it needs to show that it's real. Ezra talked about science and belief as well as testimonials and case studies. Number three, it's got to keep people engaged. How do you keep people engaged on a webinar? Interact. Great looking slides, good stories, and questions. You could do polls and stuff like that as well. Number four, it's got to be perceived as valuable content, which cracks me up. Who thinks that perceived value is bullshit? I hate that word, perceived value. Why don't we just, do, why don't we just get rid of perceived value and just actually give real value? What do you reckon? Is that okay? I, I, could, I could kind of smoke and mirrors it or I could actually give you value. I reckon it's actually easier just to give real, real value. How do we make it perceived? Well, we've got to do something before we teach it to make people actually want it in the first place. You following? All right, let's take the conversation from table level to room level. I'd love to hear what's been most helpful for you so far. Just shoot your hand up. Let's hear from three or four real quick. What's been most useful for you? Yeah. Three pieces of content. Is that less than you've been delivering till now? Less than you will when you do. Yes, because we want to deliver so much value. But remember, we, when we think value, what most people do is deliver data and information. We end up fire-hosing people with content instead of helping them make decisions. Cool? Thank you. By the way, if somebody does something good in a room with me, if, you know, shoot up their hand or call out an answer, we give them some love. What's your name? L Louise? We're going to give Louise some love. It goes like this. I'll say, let's give Louise some love. I'll count down three, two, one. We'll all give her one loud, crisp clap in sync like we were black and had rhythm. Ready? <laughs> Let's give us some love. Three, two, one. <laughs> Louise, good job. What else? What's been most helpful? Yeah. Uh, the three points for your opening hook. Three points for your opening hook, which were? Uh, attention, connection, permission. permission. Perfect. Attention, connection, permission. Let's give us some love. Three, two, one. <laughs> awesome. What else? Yeah. Just having a process and structure. Having a system to follow. Yeah, I think blank page is the scariest thing in the whole world. One of the things that James and I have in common is that we're both really good at taking complicated and turning them into systems. So now you're just like ticking boxes. Let's give them some love. Three, two, one. All righty. So we talked about the opening. We talked about the stretch. The big mistake is that we teach too much and we end up with clap, don't throw money. Mistake number three, a resistible offer. So that takes us to kind of the third major piece of your offer. What makes an offer resistible? I reckon two things. Number one, lack of clarity. Like if I don't know what it is, how it's going to help me and how to get it, that's a bit of a problem, would you agree? Like slight issue. So number one, clarity. So you can go, it's really clear or it's unclear. If it's unclear, we're not going to sell. So we've got to move it this side. Who's with me? Great. Secondly, is it undesirable or desirable? Like there was a book uh, on Amazon.com called Castration, The Advantages and Disadvantages. <laughs> really clear, not very desirable. <laughs> Good example? Just popped in my head. I thought I'd share. That's what I call a resistible offer, right, fellas? Yeah, not, not super cool. So we want to make an offer that is incredibly clear and really desirable. When we do that, then we've got everything set up just the way it needs to be. I've got a client called Rob Nixon, and he, he talks about something called the three easies. And, the, and you might want to write these down. I think they're really useful. He said every offer, yeah, like every time you make an offer, you need the three easies. Number one, it's got to be easy to understand. Number two, it's got to be easy to use. And number three, it's got to be easy to buy. Even if you just took those three things and applied that to your offer, how much better would things be if everything you sold was easy to understand, easy to use, and easy to buy? So what we've got so far, we've got three of the six big mistakes. And I've given you the three major pieces of a webinar. And I think if you just use a little bit of common sense, you go, yeah, well, every webinar has got to have like a start and a middle and an end, right? So I think they're the three that everybody would talk about. But I think there's three in between. One that happens here, one that happens here, and one that happens here. And those are the three that will make you the most money. So I want to share those with you now. Is that okay with you? All right. Number four, no stick strategy. So do you remember before... Got it? You're welcome. <laughs> what minute mark do we start to make our offer? Assuming it's a one-hour webinar, let's call it 45 as a rule of thumb. What happens if partway through your webinar, somebody bails and it's not 45 minutes yet? They don't see your offer, you don't make, any, don't make any money. It's kind of a waste. So we need some way to get people to stay to the end. It's called a stick strategy. 
So the, the fourth mistake is no stick strategy. The fix is what we call the stick. What's it called? The? Yeah. So the stick is how do we get people to stay to the end so at least they hear my offer? Here's my, you know, you're going to teach great stuff in an hour. I reckon the easiest stick in the world is to say, all right, we're going to be moving really quickly. I'm going to give you everything I can in the hour we've got. Take the very best notes you can. And if you'd like, you know, try to keep up. But if you like, I'll be happy to give you a copy of, my, of an audio recording and a, and a copy of my slides. If that would be helpful for you, just type in yes, please. People type in yes, please. What have we got? Now we've got like 80% of the people on the line want the stick strategy. And then you say, well, here's me. But, uh, firstly, everything I do is completely true and very transparent. So I'm going to say, you know what? I'm really crap at remembering this sort of stuff. I'm going to give you everything I can. We're going to get to a Q&A piece at the end. Can you do me a favor? When we get to the Q&A, can you just remind me to give you that stick strategy? Is that cool with you? I've given them a reason to stay. That's the bonuses. But what else have I done? I've made them responsible for getting it from me. So now they're like double locked into staying to the end. Is that sneaky or cool? It's both. It's sneaky. Cool. <laughs> Helpful so far? Does anyone here deal with like associations? You know, like you market through an association? Great. A lot of associations have like um, CPD points that they've got to keep up with to stay current. Like if you're an accountant, you've got to have so many hours of learning to... So it's like... So I know that a lot of you guys are here because you want to get the CPD points. Make sure you remind me at the Q&A and I'll give you the CPD code for today's session. And like, boom. So now they're going to get the CPD code or the stick strategy here after you've just done that. Good so far? All right. 